Hey everyone, welcome back to I Got Questions. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas break and New Year celebrating with your families, your friends. So today, I actually had a totally different question prepared on my way in, and then God told me that's not the question you're doing today. <laughs> that's interesting because that's actually what led us into today's question, which is how do you know when God is talking to you? Like I said, I just experienced this on the way to work this morning. It's weird to explain, but it wasn't this deep, booming, audible voice, Caleb, change your topic. You know, it wasn't I checked my phone and there was an unknown, mysterious number that said, change the topic. I think we put human limits on an inhuman God. We, we try to limit him to speaking audibly, speaking through these signs and visual things and magic when you're trying to decipher, is this God talking to me or is this just the Taco Bell I ate grumbling in my tummy? The first thing to think about is, does this follow God's character? Because God will never tell you to do something that goes against his will or his character. God is never gonna tell you to sin. God is never gonna tell you to do anything unloving to somebody. He may tell you to confront somebody but in a loving way. He's never going to tell you to approach someone unloving. Some verses, 1 John 4, 8, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 1 John 1, 5, this is the message we have heard from him and, and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that you should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And one more, Isaiah 40, 28, have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God is never going to tell you to do something that goes against himself. The second thing to think about when asking this question, how do I know God is talking to me, is have you been talking to him? And I mean really, really talking to him. I think we've, we've changed God into this magical genie gimme God. Give me, 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 give me. Give me health. Give me wealth. Give me this. Give me that. And we we expect these give me answers, and that's all we use them for is just give me, give me, give me. When's the last time you talked to God? When's the last time you just told him about your day? Just, hey, God, here's what happened today. Hey, God, this is what's going on in my life. Not asking for anything in return just talking to him, building that relationship. Because I don't know about you, but if I had a friend or a parent or a kid or any kind of relationship in my life where somebody just constantly asked me for stuff, I would probably start to screen their calls. You know, like, Ugh, Timmy's calling me again. He just wants something from me. Like, you're going to start to kind of dread that relationship. And don't get me wrong, God is love. God loves answering you. He loves hearing you. He loves talking to you. 1 John 5, 8, for 5, 14, and this is the confidence toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God loves hearing from you. But are you only using that to just ask him to give you stuff? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Or are you trying to build a relationship with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit to, to spend time with him? If we, if we spend all of our time telling God what we want, how do we know what God wants? How do we know what he's telling you to do, what his will? Because that's what that verse says. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. How do we know what his will is? Hebrews 4.12, we used this verse in a couple of videos ago. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul, the spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. If you want to hear God, 
You need to be in this book. You need to, you need to look in here because you may be saying, you know what? My relationship with my girlfriend is progressing really fast. I think we're going to have sex and I don't really understand why I'm not supposed to. This book will tell you that. Or, hey, this kid in school is really, really bullying me. I don't know how to respond back to him. This book, it will tell you how to deal with that. Or I'm just overwhelmed with depression and anxiety and I just can't even hardly move. This book <laughs> will tell you the answer to that. He has the answers to all of the questions we have. This whole series, I got questions that I've been doing, we've referenced back to the Bible. All of the questions we can think of are in this book. They're God's speaking to us. Another verse in Hebrews uh, chapter 1, one verse, verse 1 and 2, says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. God speaks to us through Jesus. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And we get to know them by studying their life, but Jesus's life in the Bible. We get to study who he is. We get to study who the Holy Spirit is. We get to see who God is. And the last thing you need to do to understand the question of, is God speaking to me? is you need to hear, you need to listen. And I know that sounds kind of cliche when I said it's not an audible voice. You need to listen, you're like, how do I do that? God's given you direction in your life and maybe you don't even know where to start. What direction has he given you? Well, this book says, love your neighbor as yourself. This book says, go and make disciples. Those are two commands that God gives us right off the bat. So maybe you need to go make things right with somebody that's done wrong to you. Or maybe you just need to go tell people about Jesus. We have to start somewhere, right? And then you got to listen to what he's saying. He's telling you to do things. And, and again, we, we reference God as this, this give me God, more so than give me things, give me wealth, give me money. But we also do this where we, we get stuck in life and we say, God, give me a sign. Ah. We want him to just give us the absolute answer. This is what you should do. And honestly, I am so glad that God doesn't just pick us up out of one situation and put us in another or give us the right answer all the way through life because that's the beauty of Christianity. We have this, this free will where God gives us, hey, this is what I think you should do. This is my desire. This is my will. But then he gives us freedom to choose. Go choose. Just like, and I love that God is modeled as a father, a parent, because parents raise their kids and try to describe the right way, try to do things the right way, tell them the right way to do things, point them the right direction. But then at some point, a parent has to let their kids fail. You have to let them fail to learn, to come back and go, what did you learn? Because that's what God does with us. He goes, hey, this is what I want. Are you sure this is what you want? I'm so glad that when we choose wrong, he doesn't come down with this fiery fury and gets mad at us and rage at us. He says, what did you learn? What did you learn? I love that. So how does God speak to us? The answer is pretty simple. Any way he wants to. <laughs> In the Old Testament, he used a burning bush and a talking donkey. He used things. He, he uses whatever he wants to speak to us because he is outside of our human realm. He can use anything. He uses the Holy Spirit. He uses Jesus. He uses this word. He uses friends. He uses music. Fun story, just this week, we had a crazy week in my house. My kids had the flu, my wife had the flu, my well pump went out, I had no water. We had bats flying through our house and not the baseball kind. We've had crazy stuff going on. And, and, and for those of you that don't know, I have twin two-year-olds and it's true what they say about two-year-olds, they're terrible. <laughs> I love my kids, they were a lot. It was chaos all through our house and God used a Veggie Tales song to speak to me and tell me to calm down. And that song, at, just to show you guys how old I am, it was covered by a band named Reliant K. Yay, 90s kids. And, and the song is called Breakdown. And throughout the whole song, it's talking about, you know, this car's broken, I have no money, the chaos of life. And there's one line in this Veggie Tales songs that says, 
He'll seek and destroy everything I enjoy, but I won't be the one he takes down. No, I won't break down. God used a Veggie Tales song to speak to my life. He's going to use things to speak to you. He will speak to you by whatever means necessary. Veggie Tales, people, friends, music, creation, God is speaking. Maybe even a talking donkey. You might want to see a therapist if that's the case he's using now because I don't think he uses that way anymore. God is speaking. The real question is, are you listening? Thanks so much for watching today of I Got Questions. If you got questions, comment them below. If you like this video, like it, share it, tell all your friends, and we'll see you next week.